Hello and welcome back to another exciting video of Explore Bio with Dr. Abhishek on markers. Today we will learn about cast marker. What is its principle, how it works and some of the applications of cast marker. The technique appears to be a bit complicated but do not worry, I have tried to make it as simple as possible for you. I will explain everything in a step by step manner so just have patience and watch it till the end. CASP stands for Competitive Allele Specific PCR. It is a powerful and high precision marker technique to detect primarily SNP or single nucleotide polymorphism or mutation in individuals. But it can also detect insertions and deletions at specific locus. Therefore, it is a biallelic and a codominant marker that can distinguish homozygotes from heterozygotes. Other markers like SSR, ILP, RFLP are also codominant but they can be multiallelic. If you are interested to learn about differences between dominant and codominant markers and various types of molecular markers, I highly recommend you to check out my playlist on markers. Coming on to the principle behind CASP marker assay. CASP utilizes the power of PCR to amplify a specific allele using allele specific primers. The sensitivity and speed of detection is further enhanced by utilizing additional fluorescent probes which is detected in the same way as done in real time PCR. Suppose you want to check whether a specific SNP or mutation is there or not in your target individuals. So you design allele specific forward primers and a common reverse primer so that a particular allele gets amplified. In subsequent cycles of PCR, two different fluorescent probes complementary to the primer designed for each alleles are used. To make it simpler, let's see how CASP actually works. But before this, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, do subscribe and check out my other videos. You might find them useful too. Let's resume to how CASP works. The first step is to have genomic DNA of the individuals in which SNP has to be checked. If the individual is diploid, it will have two copies of the genome. Here I am showing just one copy of the DNA for simplicity. In individual 1, at specific locus, we have A allele whereas in individual 2 it is allele G. So there is one SNP at a given locus in two individuals which we will be confirming using cast marker technique. Next you need to design three primers, two allele specific forward primers for each allele and a common reverse primer. CASP utilizes allele specific primers that only binds when it finds complementary DNA to bind. So that at the end you would be able to distinguish which allele or SNP was present in your DNA of interest in a particular individual. I hope it's clear till here. Just keep listening carefully, you will understand everything. While designing and synthesizing the allele specific forward primers, you have to add some extra nucleotides at 5' prime end. This is known as tail sequence which do not anneal to DNA as there is no complementary sequence in the DNA. But why we add tail sequence? The tail sequence is complementary to the fluorescent tropes that will be used for fluorescence based detection. We add two different tail sequence in allele specific forward primers complementary to two different fluorescent probes. Here the red color tail in F1 primer at the left is complementary to fluorescent probe FAM while yellow color tail in F2 primer at your right is complementary to hex fluorescent probe. Just remember that the fluorescent probes are initially quenched and do not emit fluorescence. It is only after a few rounds of PCR amplification, the sequence complementary to probes gets incorporated and the probe becomes free from quencher and emit fluorescence upon binding to DNA. Additionally, in PCR reaction setup, tag DNA polymerase, unlabeled DNTP mix and MgCl2 are added for DNA replication. Let me make it simpler for you. Here, PCR of individual 1 having allele A is shown. Forward primer which is specific for allele A that is F1 primer will bind to it whereas F2 primer cannot. Why? Because at the 3 prime end it has a C. And for successful PCR amplification, primer should have exit complementary nucleotide at 3 prime end which is true in case of F1 primer. You can see in the picture that the red tail is not complementary to individual 1's DNA. And hence it is not binding, it is just hanging on there. This is how it looks upon amplification after PCR cycle 1. During PCR cycle 2, using same F1 and common reverse primer, the individual 1 DNA gets amplified. But this time you can see the sequence complementary to the overhang region that is the tail region is also getting amplified. 
A similar method to detect SNP is Tetra Arms PCR, which is non-fluorescent agrose gel-based visualization technique on which I have already made a detailed video. Now, if you can recall in cast marker technique, I talked about fluorescent probes. Yes, during PCR cycle 3, now the probes complementary to the tail region of allele specific primer can bind and emit fluorescence. After several rounds of PCR, sufficient PCR product comprising of fluorescently labeled strain and non-labeled strain will accumulate. Using a fluorescence detection system as used for real-time PCR or qPCR, you can detect if a specific allele is present or not based on the fluorescence emitted. Similarly, in case of individual 2, G allele specific primer F2 can bind but F1 cannot. Yellow tail complementary to the hex fluorescent probe will bind and emit a different fluorescent signal to that of FAM probe. This is the case when you have a homozygous individual in which both the genomic copies of that locus carry the same allele A or G in one of the strands. Suppose in individual 3 you have one copy of genome carrying A allele and another copy of the genome carries G allele. As I mentioned earlier that CASP are codominant markers and they can easily distinguish homozygous and heterozygous alleles. In such case during PCR amplification both the allele specific forward primers F1 and F2 and a common reverse primer can bind their DNA. Similarly both FAM and HEX probes can bind and emit fluorescence. Here due to the phenomena of FRET or fluorescence resonance energy transfer a different type of fluorescent signal is emitted which can be detected by the instrument. You can learn how FRET works in a very short video linked in the description below. Using CASP marker, you can genotype a large number of individuals for studies like sex determination, genetic mapping, molecular breeding and trait dissection. Here are a few applications of CASP marker technique. CASP marker has been successfully utilized to discriminate between male and female pistachia species. Using CAS marker mutation in FAD2 gene affecting the fatty acid composition and hence its quality, its flavor and shelf life can be easily detected. The technique is also used to discriminate the resistant and susceptible individuals of canola. To learn more about different types of molecular markers, techniques, plant tissue culture, check out my other videos. I have also made a complete series of videos on research paper writing, poster making, presentation, publishing and lot of others. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay informed about my latest uploads. Comment below if you are already using cast marker technique or planning to use it for your research. In case of doubts, do mention it. I usually reply to the comments. Thanks and see you in another interesting video.